Hey, AJ here. Uh, today is, uh, it's almost fall. It's around September of time, upon the time of me filming this. And one of the things I always used to love about fall is pumpkin scones. Uh, I love the pumpkin scones specifically from Starbucks. Now, that might be a weird thing to love. Maybe, maybe lots of people love them. I have always loved them. And part of the reason I love them is they're not actually like any other scone I've ever uh, had. They're kind of more moist. They got this thick white glaze on it with these orange squiggle. And I just used to love them when I used to work in retail when I was a kid, I would literally eat them for lunch. I would have that and a four shot uh, caramel macchiato. I remember because one time it gave me a panic attack, but that's a story for a different day. Uh, for this recipe, this recipe is uh, can be made vegan uh, and it's gluten free and it's also pretty darn good. So I think step one to this amazing vegan pumpkin scone recipe is let's go get the Starbucks one to see what we're up against. So I'm gonna run this way and go to the Starbucks right across the street. Cut to that footage. Yeah. At least there's a line. Hey, can I get a pumpkin scone? Pumpkin scone, okay. That's it. Here is your scone. Thank you. All right, here we go. We got the Starbucks pumpkin scone. So let's grab it real quick. So you can see here, it's kind of a cube and it's got that glaze I was talking about. It used to be in triangles. It's actually weird to me to kind of see this. See how it's like a square now? So it didn't used to be like this. Like I said, it's been a few years since I've had this because I don't have gluten really anymore um, unless it's like a really, really, really special occasion and I don't really have eggs or milk and there's eggs and milk in this. So our mission is to make a version of this that doesn't have that and maybe let's make one that tastes even better than this. That sounds like a good idea, right? All right, so first thing we wanna do, cut up some butter into cubes. You kinda wanna do it like you would a pie, like I said before. And you wanna keep this super cold because when you mix it with the flour and stuff, you actually want it to kinda be like a sandy texture, not gloopy, um, gloopy, yes. Gloopy, we're gonna say that's a word. So lucky for me, this is a new one, so it still has the measurements. So we're gonna take half a cup. We're just gonna cut it down the middle. Make sure you have a, sh a sharp knife also. Um, this one isn't sharp, so I'm not practicing what I preach, but you want something that is sharp. And then what I like to do is I kinda, I like to go down the middle, kinda like you would with an onion, Gordon Ramsay style. Then I'll take the wrapping off, and then I'll start really just giving it to it in a, in a normal, not weird way. And like the better, the more cube-like you can make it, the better. Expert knife skills, by the way. I know, I should really like, my brother is actually a chef. He could probably teach me how to cut this like a grown-up. But anyway, this'll do. Um, cool, so now we gotta get some stuff into the uh, food processor, so let me set that up, and I'll meet you back here in like two minutes to uh, start mixing stuff in the food processor. All right, so uh, I'm preparing my flax egg. So remember, if you use flax eggs and not real eggs to prepare one, so you're gonna need one flax egg. So that's one tablespoon of flax meal, three tablespoons of warm water. You let it sit. It looks like this disgusting mess, but it works like an egg. Okay, so next, we're gonna need to get the ingredients into the food processor. Now, if you don't have a food processor, Panic, I'm just kidding. You can still have these, uh, just use a bowl. Just use a mixing bowl. Um, if you have something to cut, like uh, cut it in, like whether it's a metal spoon or like a, a pastry cutter, those are gonna be better. The main reason you want the food processor isn't actually for all the flours and sugars you're mixing, it's actually because of the butter, because you want the butter to stay cold and get chopped in without melting. Okay, so with this, the first thing you're gonna need is a about two cups and one quarter of flour. So we got about a cup here of, uh, of the flour. And really be careful because you don't wanna make a butt of yourself like I typically do on most days and, um, and mix it up. 
I really, if you're somebody who isn't sure about what kind of flour you like to use, I really like the um, Bob's Red Mill One to One. That's a really good brand. Um, so we got the flour in there. Next thing we wanna throw in, and you don't actually even have to throw it in, you could just put it in, is um, some baking powder. So this, this recipe calls for baking powder and baking uh, soda, not baking sugar. Well, it does call for just normal sugar. I don't know what a baking sugar is. Any sugar, if you bake it. Okay, so you want about a teaspoon of the baking powder, right? One teaspoon, nope, two teaspoons of the baking powder. See, this is why you gotta write things down. Especially with baking, it's more sciencey. It'll uh, really ruin things if like your equations are off. And then for the baking soda, you don't want too much of this. You just want about a quarter of a teaspoon. And then next, we're gonna wanna throw the spices in. So for this, we're gonna use the holy quad. The holy trinity, the holy square. The holy square, okay, of uh, baking uh, when it comes to pumpkin, which is cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, and clove. We'll do uh, cinnamon. I'll put the exact measurements below because like I said, this isn't my recipe, but I usually just kind of eyeball it. I, I like it spicy, to be honest. Like the more flavor in my book, the better. So yeah, so I, I'm not somebody who's like trying to avoid spice or, or worried about it being overpowering. Okay, so then we're gonna throw some nutmeg in. And, and I'm doing this in like descending order. So like you want the most cinnamon, the second most nutmeg. Again, just follow the recipe exactly as written below if that's what you'd prefer then some ginger and then you want to throw ideally ground cloves actually you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna actually grind this down myself let me grab a little bag real quick so this is the real professional way to grind up clove is with a rolling pin or ideally like a comically large hammer would have been actually a little better but uh that's going to be better than just throwing an entire thing of clove in Buy it ground or use a spice grinder. They don't have one here, so I can't. So brown sugar, quarter of a cup. Oh, it's getting crowded up here, huh? Let's get this out of here. All right. Hey, Dad. Right, you're going to be my uh, taste tester later. Is that cool? I guess. What do you mean, I guess? So quarter of a, uh, of a tablespoon of brown sugar, three tablespoons of granulated sugar. If you avoid sugar, you don't eat sugar. So like, I know a lot of people who are health conscious are like, I don't like eating sugar. Um, because they think it's like evil or whatever. And people do generally eat too much of it, but I don't think that makes sugar evil, in my opinion. Sugar comes from a plant, it's called the sugar cane. But if you, let's say, are overindulging or you're on a keto diet or something like that, what I would tell you to do is you could use Swerve. Swerve is a like zero, it's a non-sugar replacement that works really great. They have a brown sugar, powdered sugar, and granulated sugar, and they all work pretty great. The only thing that they don't do is sometimes they don't melt. So like if you're making cookies or something, they won't flatten. They'll stay like giant like towers, like balls. So make sure you flatten them up a little. Okay, let me get this mixing and get some sick B-roll of it mixing. And then I will see you. When... Okay. And then I will see you when we start to cut the butter in and when we start adding the butter. All right, I'll see you in a minute. All right, so we've got this stuff mixed up. You can kind of see it there. Now, the brown sugar does tend to clump, so you might have to break it apart uh, with your hands or maybe like a wooden spoon or something. Let me see if I got a spatula. So we can use our trusty melted rubber spatula to kind of help break up the, the brown sugar because brown sugar is wet, so it will sometimes like blend together. So we got this in here. Now we wanna add the butter. So I'm using the, like I said, the Miyoko's brand. It's already cubed. Um, I left it out, which I think is what we call in the biz professionally a mistake. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I would throw it in the fridge until you're ready to use it. I'm not super worried because I've made this recently. Maybe I should be. Okay, so now you're gonna blend this. I would pulse it and like go like 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off just to avoid it clumping. And you want it to kind of look like sand and you shouldn't be able to see the big chunks of butter anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this blending um, and then hopefully we will get uh, our pumpkin puree wet ingredients together next, okay? Okay? Is it okay? Oh, it is. Okay, cool. I'll see you in a bit. All 
Then we're gonna make some buttermilk. Uh, now, buttermilk is not plant-based. So if you can have buttermilk, woohoo! Uh, if you can't, then this is what I would recommend. So we're gonna do about three tablespoons of oat milk. I would actually tell you that this works generally better with almond milk. I can't tell you why. I just think every time I've made it with almond milk, it comes out better. It like actually thickens up a little, but whatever. This is how we're gonna make plant-based um, buttermilk. And then you're gonna take about a teaspoon. You're gonna take about a teaspoon-ish, no more, maybe half a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. And this is gonna make it taste tangy like buttermilk. And I would just, you know, give it a swirl, let it sit for a minute next to your flax egg. We're gonna use both of those in a little bit. Technically, you don't have to wait at all when it comes to making the both of these, I would actually say, but waiting, I don't know, every time I wait, it comes out better. Maybe it just means I'm going slower. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do foolishly is try to open up a thing of, you want canned pumpkin? Did you know, by the way, pumpkin puree is actually not pumpkin, it's squash. So let's get uh, about a half a cup of this in here uh, i'm not gonna be too obsessed with the measurement i know i just said earlier that baking you should be obsessed with the measurement but i'm not gonna be too obsessed with it and yes i know i'm putting it in here with a rubber spatula um this is kind of a last minute do so <laughs> i'm last minute sort of making these scones but anyway let's get this going um so we got about half a cup is what we want so we got that going next thing we're gonna throw in there let's do the buttermilk you can already see, I mean, it, first of all, it smells like buttermilk, but if you see it, uh, you can't really see it. it. It's a little thicker already. All right, so you're gonna throw that in next, get that going. And then the next thing is you want your either your flax or your real egg. This has been sitting for a while, so it's got the nice gloop that we like. Nice and gloopy. Nothing will be more appetizing than calling a food gloopy. And then we'll want about a tablespoon of honey. Now, I first of all, if you click this because it said vegan or plant-based, don't come for me. I know honey isn't technically vegan. So if you can't or won't eat honey because you don't want to take honey from bees, which is awesome, you take it from maple syrup. You can use, uh, you can take maple, a tablespoon of maple syrup or agave syrup and swap it in. You're mostly using this as a sweetener. Um, you don't need it in terms of texture or anything. So really any of those would work. Okay, so for the honey, you want about a tablespoon. And sometimes like you really be careful if you are using honey that you wanna mix it well because the honey is sticky. So it could end up staying in a blob and then you have one scone that's got a blob of honey and the rest of them just don't have that flavor you want. And then we want about a teaspoon of vanilla. Again, I would measure the, if I were you, but since I'm not you and I'm me, I'm not gonna measure it. But if I were you, which I'm not, I would definitely measure this. But since I'm not you, I'm not gonna measure this. This bit probably won't make it into the video. Okay, so let's get this stirring all nice and together. You want this nice and mixed. The main thing we wanna make sure we're mixing is the honey, right? So like, up and the egg, cause the egg's gonna help it rise and stuff. And my stove is pretty much done, so this is gonna be a relatively quick recipe. I wish I had my clear um, bowl, but that one's being uh, taken by watermelon right now. So you want it to look like that, not super complicated. Now it's not gonna look like enough, but it actually is. Um, and weirdly, I think it's the pumpkin that makes it so moist. So remember in the beginning when I said like a lot of scones are not that moist, like they're dry. This one is weirdly moist. I think it's because of the pumpkin. Pumpkin and sweet potato seem to make things really moist. So let me get that going. Let me stop saying the word moist. Let me grab some uh, of the dry ingredients and get that mixed in here. Our flour, we have our pumpkin mix. So let's get them mixed up. And this isn't really traditional because the sugar is already mixed with the flour and as is the butter, and those are traditionally both wet ingredients. Yes, even sugar is technically in baking a wet ingredient. All right, so now we got this going. We're gonna get this nice and mixed up. You can see, like I said, it looks too dry, but you're gonna see in just a moment that it actually is not. And you just gotta keep working it. Try to work relatively quickly because you do not want it to, um, again, you don't want the butter to melt. So even me talking, I risk this butter melting too much. So I'm gonna get this stirring and I'll see you in a minute when we start shaping this, cut it up and put it on the uh, baking sheet. All right, so we've got our dough mixed up. 
So now what we got to do is we have to uh, sort of lay it out and then cut it. Now I would advise having lots of flour for this, otherwise, because um, it does get really sticky, this stuff. And you want to make it about, a, in my opinion, about an inch tall, okay? So when you're, when you're doing this, kind of form it so that it's a circle and so that it's an inch tall. And we're not going to do like the new school Starbucks that makes these squares. Uh, I want them to actually be reminiscent and nostalgic for me. So I'm going to do it as a circle and then I'm going to cut it into triangles. So you want to flour your knife and you want a giant massive knife. The bigger the better. If it could be like an anime style sword, that would be even better. So that you could just not just cut through the scone, but through any of your enemies. You want to cut it into eighths. So go down the middle, go down in half again, just keep halfing. But this is basically what you want. And then you very carefully put them on your baking sheet with a uh, slip mat or some parchment paper on it. And then you should be good to go. We got to make the glaze and then glaze them and then we can eat them. Awesome. All right, so I will see you in a bit. All right, so you wanna put the scones are in the oven. They're gonna hang out there at 425 Fahrenheit for 13 to 15 minutes. All right, so I pulled out these pumpkin scones. They kind of went a little over, which is kind of a bummer, but there they go. They still look pretty good, and they are going to be covered in glaze. They're a little more brown than I would like. I like them a little bit under, but that's because I like them to be, you know, kind of moist like a muffin on the inside. So, all right, so we got some powdered sugar. It's about a cup, and then you want to put maybe up to a tablespoon of your alternative or normal milk in there you don't need a lot remember you want this thing kind of thick i got my scones right here chilling getting cold but really i would rather do a little bit uh too little than too much and honestly just kind of like eyeball it you want it to be thick but still pourable you definitely don't want it to be runny like you're not trying to do like if it looks the if it has the consistency of like pancake art it's too thin you want it to be thick you want it to uh, to you know, almost look like it's gonna stay on the scone and not move, and then the heat kind of melts it. So you really gotta work it sometimes here. Very little bit of milk. You're like, is this gonna be enough? And it will be. You just need to keep mixing it and then keep eyeballing it, keep adding, you know, a little bit of milk, a little bit of sugar. Um, there's not one perfect one and different powdered sugars, like some of them have cornstarch, some of them don't. So it depends on the brand you have, and it also depends on the alt milk you use. So just keep an eye on it. Keep going until it's spreadable, but uh, not runny. All right, so for the last part, we've got the white layer of the glaze drying. That actually is starting to look okay. I know they're a little over, but it's all right. So I'm gonna take the same little uh, thing that I was using for the white icing, and I'm gonna uh, create the orange drizzle. So let's get it. So I got about a cup of the powdered sugar in here. I'm gonna throw maybe like one to two tablespoons of the orange. Last time I did a little less, and you just couldn't, it wasn't as orange as I wanted. And then I'm gonna throw in some cinnamon, nutmeg, and some ginger as well. And this is just so that it kind of adds a little bit more of that pumpkin-y, spicy flavor. I mean, pumpkin pie flavor is really just cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. Yeah, you wanna throw a little bit of that in, and you're kind of going for, this can be a slightly looser texture, but you really want it to be, you know, thick as well um it can be a little bit more runny but you really want the thick lines on top but yeah that's that's basically it so we're, we're making the orange drizzle here and this is the final step and then we get this on here it's going to be looking really cute and then i'm going to have my uh father taste test it unfortunately for him or maybe fortunately he gets to eat a bunch of treats Don't act so enthusiastic, dude. I'm enthused. All right, I'm here with my dad, and uh, we're going. To, he's gonna taste test the Starbucks pumpkin scone versus the one I made. Um, I'm gonna give you a warning. This one's a little overdone, as you can see. I like but, crunch. Okay, you like crunch. Great. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So. If you want to give me a bite of each and let me know, does this one hold up to that? Is it a copycat? Is it better? Is it worse? If it's worse, this whole episode's ruined. So, but don't lie. 
no no pressure okay so here you go good, good. you can just get it too i don't think anybody else is going to eat that no, scone you never know well. all right food critic what are you noticing about that what do you taste it's not overpowering mm -hmm. it's kind of smooth it's, it's not overpowering in flavor yeah i mean it's it's you can taste the flavor but it's not like it doesn't they give you like that real heavy pumpkin spice flavor that you might get like in coffee or something like that. Got you. Now try mine. Hold on, let me hold it up for the camera so they can see how. Yeah. I like crunch. All right. I wish it was a little under personally, but I, I, I think these are still good. Is this, is, is the silence mean what? It's pretty similar. Okay. Not overpowering. Okay. Just because of the, dr the crunch, it creates, makes it a little bit drier. Okay. But that's expected because the crunch, but other than that, it's good. Okay. Yeah. Would you say that it, if somebody can eat this because they can't eat gluten or they don't want to eat eggs or milk, is this a, a good copycat version of it? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Did you like this one better or the one that I made the other day? I like this one better. Really? Yeah, because the other one was a little bit more moist. <laughs> Yeah, I like the moist I one. Like the, I like the crunch. You want a dry scone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what most people like. I like that it's moist usually, but okay. Cool. Well, let me just grab another one. Okay. Yeah, you can have it. Oh, thanks. Thanks for <laughs> being on here. <laughs> what compensation? I love it. Oh, this is the compensation. <laughs> I know. Yeah, and, and not all of it, just the amount you ate. Yeah, I know. So there it is. Pumpkin scones. So yeah, I would say all in all, I'm you know I'm pretty satisfied with this. I think it it does its job of being a copycat. I do, even though everybody else seems to like the drier scones. I wish it was a little bit more moist. Um, so one of the things I would recommend is I, I cooked it for 15 minutes. I would do it for 13. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you go out and make this because this is really good, especially if you're somebody who's gluten sensitive or vegan or allergic to some stuff. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, if you make it, go ahead and tag me at Hey AJ Rivera. And if you like videos like this, smush the like button. If you want to make sure you always get the next one, subscribe, hit the bell, all the other things. Um, thank you so much, and I will see you next time.